Hey there guys, Darkman Herman, welcome back for Dragon Ball Super Chapter 13. Now you might be thinking... Shut up. Uh, I don't know if that picked up or not. You know, you may be thinking, where's Chapter 12? Well, the thing with that is, I recorded it, I edited it, and I was getting ready to post it the next day, because it was like really late when I finished editing it, and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the fully edited version, or the original, I just, I looked on my SD cards, I looked on all my uh, hard drive, uh, hard drives, uh, flash drives, I looked on all those, it, was a, it wasn't on my computer anywhere, and so I was just like, you know what, I don't care. Bad way to think about it, sure, but this chapter 31 is already out, and I'm really slow, so it doesn't matter if I skip a chapter of Dragon Ball Super here or there. So yeah. Also, I don't have a Dragon Ball Super wall yet. So yeah, we're just gonna do a bleach this week. We're gonna switch it, well this month, we're gonna switch it off every now and then. Like, then if I don't have one, by the next time the chapter comes out, it's gonna be the Ruby Curtain. I'm just gonna keep switching it like that, okay. So the chapter starts off with Goku rushing at Hit again, and Hit just punches him, which again, if he can take out a Super Saiyan Blue very easily, he should have no problem taking out Goku in one punch. Just saying. And so Goku punches him, but he like does his time to skip thingamajigger to get out of the way, but Goku predicts where he's going and punches there. Or he kind of like pulls this off a couple more times. And before Goku's just like, okay, I, I'm, I'm figuring out your trick, but I'm still weaker than you. So he turns Super Saiyan. And Hits just kind of says like, why aren't you turning into your blue-haired form? That's way stronger. And Goku's just like, that'll come later. We have to like, we really got to get this fight going before I pull everything out. And it turns out that like, Using like the time leap barely uses any energy at all, which for an ability as cheap as the time leap, I would think it uses like a little bit more than just a tiny bit. And she just kind of says like, well on the other hand, Goku is having to react with incredible speed, which is starting to just like wear him down slowly. And Beerus says that Goku hasn't beaten power which just pretty much says, as a normal, as a regular Super Saiyan, he's stronger than Hit. So how did he beat Vegeta? Because if he's equal to a, if he's weaker than a Super Saiyan, that means even with the point one thing, Vegeta should still easily be able to demolish him as a Super Saiyan Blue. Because I don't know if you know this, but Super Saiyan Blue's a little bit better than normal Super Saiyan. So Goku starts charging up, there's a little twinkles, and you already know what that means. It's the Super Saiyan God. It's the Super Saiyan God of red haired mode. Which I'm just gonna say, I, I do prefer this red haired mode over Super Saiyan Blue, just gonna say. And it also confirms that not only is this form gonna stay irrelevant, which I really, really like, because it's just kinda like, Oh, here's this new form. Use it this one time, and never use it again. But hey, the manga's cool like that. It's gonna give everyone a little bit of something. I love this form. They're gonna use it. And Gohan, Goten, not Gohan. Gohan's not there because he sucks. Goten says it's Super Saiyan Red, and, and Chunks just says that's just what they call God. That's just God mode. And I thought like, okay, I thought of some good names for these Super Saiyan things. Okay, let's presume that like Super Saiyan Y, that mode that was said is coming out. I don't know if that was like official or whatever. But okay, like we have the red haired form, that's Saiyan God. The blue haired form, Super Saiyan God. White haired form, true Super Saiyan God. I don't know what this was all about. But yeah, that's. I like that. I like my idea more than this. And so Goku dashes at him. And Hit uses his time leap and gets behind him, but Goku breaks out of it and just decks him. Which, if he's weaker than a Super Saiyan, that should take him out in one shot. I know this is like 
uh, it's something kind of petty to get upset about. But the differences in power has always been something that's super relevant in Dragon Ball Z. Where, like, you have, like, Kurlin try to go up against, like, Raccoon, who takes him out in one hit, and there's a way bigger power gap between Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God than Krillin and Raccoon. I mean, it's just like, that should have just, like, taken his head off, honestly. But it turns out that, like, if his power is much higher than his opponent, like, okay, I'm going to use Goku for an example, obviously. So since Goku's power is way higher than his, he can break out of the time sleep faster, so it's less than 0.1 seconds long, which is kind of cool. But then Beerus brings up, I don't know why I can't Vegeta break out of it, and that's because he used Super Saiyan Blue too much, so it made him really tired. Yeah, he, he used it too much, like that, that time he punched Kaba. That was way too much. This is bullcrap. And so Hit finally decides to get serious and unleashes his full power. And it does something really weird where it shows like like every single one of Goku's movements. But and he's like Goku dashes at him and he stops it when like the brief time between the, like the time like Goku dashed him and the time leap started, he went Super Saiyan Blue to get stronger than him again. He kicks him, charges up a Kamehameha, and that does not finish him. And so I think I know where this is going now. Believe me, everyone's seen that clip of, you know what, the coolest thing in the entire Dragon Ball Super series so far. Kaioken times 10 Super Saiyan... chapter, but then he added it, like, Tora, whatever his name is, it's not Toriyama who's drawing this, or whatever, it's just like, oh, I really want to put in the, the time to go Super Saiyan Red, it, but, oh, I don't have enough time to get the, the Kaioken thing in, I'll just have him give up. I don't know if that was it, but honestly, I would have preferred the Kaioken times 10 Super Saiyan Blue over the Red Heart mode, I mean, I know it's like my, it's that, is my favorite Super Saiyan, so why did Goku jump out of bounds? You may be asking yourself right now. It's because he wanted us to see Monaka fight. Yep. Yep, so Monaka steps up to fight. Beerus is just like, oh yeah, we're, we're screwed. Hang on, I'm just gonna be a little, I'm gonna be a little salty for the rest of this chapter just because I really wanted to see that. And Monaka just like runs up, just starts swinging his arm. And kind of like, just baps hit on the knee. And he just falls out of bounds. He's just like, oh yeah, you gave up on me, even though you could have totally beaten me. So I'll give up for you, just so you don't, so, so your dark team doesn't lose. But then as, uh, Champa's just kind of like ridiculing hit for that, because, you know, it's obvious that Monaka is very strong. The only one can't see that's Goku. Ooh. Spears is just kind of like, hey, moron, someone's here for us, and that thing. But apparently that thing's the king of the cosmos, or whatever, like the ultimate supreme god. And I'm just going to say this right now, I love the way that this guy talks, I mean, I'm just like, listen to this, like, 
I figured I'd swing on over here and make a public appearance to make sure shit didn't hit the fan. It was just kind of like, you know, you'd expect a character like this to be like, super like, composed and be like all proper and stuff, but you know, he just says whatever he wants. He's just like, oh, I guess it was so freaking boss, and man, it was so awesome, we should hold one of these every single year or something. And Gozu's just like, yeah, let's do it. And him and the guy become like friends or something. Yeah, and then they're gone. <sighs> and so they summoned the new ultimate Shenron with the Super Dragon Balls, which it actually turns out that the planet that they were fighting on was the seventh Super Dragon Ball which is kind of weird because it looked way bigger than the other ones. I don't know, it might just be like the perspective because they, they could have been like way farther out than they appeared. And yeah, that's a pretty uh, bad a looking dragon if I do say so myself. And so Beerus makes his wish and it actually turns out that what he wished for was life to return to the Universe 6. Universe 6 is, yeah, planet Earth. So, yeah, I mean, they, they act like they hate each other, but they, but they secretly care. And he's just kind of like, Goku just kind of says, like, I really want to fight Monaka right now. And Beerus is just like, nope, 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 he, he's our treasured warrior, you can't fight him. And that is the end of the tournament. Give me a sec. This kind of seems like a really big waste of time, honestly, because, yeah, I know, it's like a sudden move shift, but like, whatever, okay. The problem I have with this is, everyone from Universe 6 was absolutely terrible, except for Hit. Honestly, if Goku tried hard enough, I'm sure he could have beaten every single person on Universe 6's team alone. So you got Bautamakum, just throws him off. Hit, he could have just turned Super Saiyan and done what Vegeta did and just need him, instantly taken out. Atom Vegeta probably would have had turns, probably would have just turned Super Saiyan 3 or something. Um, because he didn't really seem to be all that powerful, honestly, he didn't really do much. I mean, he hit Vegeta like once. Kaba, he was smart, not strong. So Goku could have just went in base form. He probably could have just taken him out, uh, and then hit. Just kind of the same thing that happened there. I mean, he might have turned Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times ten if it was just up to him. But yeah, I liked it. I liked a lot of the stuff that happened. Like I thought it was just. It would have been cooler if Universe Six was just a little bit better because they just kind of all felt like jokes. The only one I could, you could take seriously was Hit, and that's because he's the only one who didn't really suck, but at the end of the day, Goku could have easily taken him down. Like, Goku took out Gotama, he could have taken out Frost easily, and then he still had a fight, he'd hit. And it's just like, anyone else being there kind of was a waste of time. I mean, no one else, other than Goku and Vegeta even had got to have a good fight. Like, it's kind of seemed like a good time to like have other characters fight. Like, Majin Buu was said to be here. Okay, he probably could have taken out Gotama or Frost. And like, again, with Frost, like, honestly, he didn't seem very strong because he death-beamed Goku to the fades. And Goku just got up like it was nothing. I honestly doubt Goku even had to turn Super Saiyan to beat him if he hadn't cheated. Like, Piccolo got a fight, he was just stretchy arms and shooting at each other, it was, an, it, it was terrible. Um, but yeah, all it really came down to was uh, Goku and Vegeta. I mean, I know, like, for all the other chapters, I was kind of, like, excited, like, oh yeah, this is really cool, and yeah. Other than, like, the, for the Frost cheating part, but it was just kind of, like, I mean, at the point when... Piccolo was taken out, I already knew that, like, there wasn't going to be any fights with them, but it, it just, I, I don't even know where I'm going anymore, let's see you guys next, next, next time.